My name is Sarah Archer. I am a comedy, speaking, engagement and mindset coach. And today I'm going to be doing a micro workshop on joke uh, wordplay skills. So how some skills that you can use to write uh, puns and stuff. So my mission is basically to make people laugh more and uh, so they get great benefits in, in, in at home and in their speaking and also to increase the humour in business as well because it's pretty boring. So the three uh, techniques I'm going to teach you today are all kind of puns or wordplay techniques. I quite like some of this wordplay stuff because it, it gives you an opportunity to regress and, and become childlike and sort of look at words with a fresh set of eyes and um, chuck the dictionary out the window. So the first technique I'm going to talk to you about is called redefinition. Now, some of you may have listened to I'm sorry, I haven't a clue. Now I'm talking about the Radio 4 programme here and not the LBC interview with Diane Abbott. Anyway, on this Radio 4 programme, I'm sorry, I haven't a clue, and one of the games they play is called the Uxbridge English Dictionary. And on this game, the panellists take old words and give them new definitions, new meanings. I have attempted my own redefinitions for you. So I'm going to read through them so you can see how they work. Mascara, the automotive industry in Italy. Abdication, a holiday for celibate men. Absenteeism, a type of golf played only off the grass. Duplicity, where con men live. An effeminate, a camp Dalek. That's one of my favourites, I quite like that one. And here are some of the proper ones from I'm sorry I haven't got a clue panellists. Randomise, a squint. Kingdom, a royal contraceptive. Jugular, a busty vampire. Mishmash, late for mass due to drunkenness. Himalaya, a transsexual rooster. Now, one of the techniques, the, the, some tips about using redefinition is, is this. Try and find words with lots of syllables because they're useful, they're, they make it easier to do this with. And then um, say the words out loud and try and take each syllable. And if you can find a different meaning for each of the syllables, uh, then that makes it easier to make something funny. And in terms of uh, sourcing the words for this, don't use a dictionary, use a thesaurus, because you'll get uh, a much better choice. It'll save you some time, basically. Okay, we're going on to double meaning now. Yes, we are. Now, this is about misdirection. You uh, set up the audience with one story and they think it's gonna, the ending's gonna be congruent with that story, but actually the comedian slips in a second story and those things are connected by a word or phrase. And in this, um, these examples, it's a, a word or phrase with a double meaning. So, two different stories with a connecting word or phrase. And again, I had a little go at doing some of these. You might be from Swindon if your only cultural experience is eating a Danone yoghurt. Theresa May is called a snap election. Jeremy Corbyn said that's the last time he plays old maid with her. Before I move on to the last joke, I'll just tell you which are the connected words. So in the first one, we see it was cultural. Cultural meaning into the arts and cultural meaning bacteria, as in the yoghurt. The second one was snap, of course, because old maid is another version of snap. And the next joke, which I wrote today, which I quite like. Jeremy Corbyn's election campaign is on the turn. I'm not surprised. It's used by date, it was 1974. Uh, and now, there is an absolute master of this type of uh, double meaning, double entendre, and that is Mr. Tim Vine. So I've got a couple of his to share with you too. So I said to the gym instructor, can you teach me how to do the splits? He said, are you flexible? I said, well, I can't make Tuesdays. And obviously the 
connecting word there was flexible. So I said to the train driver, I want to go to Paris. He said, you're a star? I said, well, I'm on TV, but I'm no Dean Martin. Now the technique for these ones is to find two nouns or two categories and make some associations. So um, about tw if you can get to about 20 words with each, so if you've got a noun, I don't know, um, chair or dog, um, then you would basically try and find 10 or 20 words associated with the word chair and 10 or 20 words associated with the word dog. And then you would try and look for some connection uh, between them that you could, uh, you could use for the double meaning. And yes, the last one I'm going to tell you about today is associations. Now this is actually two silly ideas together, logical but silly. Here's another joke I wrote today for this session. Theresa May is so committed to a strong relationship with Europe, she's hired some specialist advisors, Cheryl Cole and Katie Price. Now obviously there, the connection, logical but silly, is relationship. Obviously getting relationship advice from the two ladies that I mentioned, it's probably not going to be the most sensible thing to do. The second one is Donald Trump is the definition of a new man, a cry baby. Obviously there, it's two ideas again, the connecting thing is new, as in baby and metrosexual. I don't know if anyone would ever call Donald Trump a metrosexual. Um, security man punched him in the face, I don't know. Anyway, and here's some classics for you. He did the work of two men, Laurel and Hardy. It was so hot that year that Ronnie Corbett had to use Jordan for shade. If anyone needs these jokes explained to them, uh, send me an email. You can get to me via my website and we can have a sesh. So, those are the three techniques. Redefinition, double meaning and associations. Now, here's some general tips for you that you should bear in mind when you're doing any of those techniques that I've just talked to you about or any other sort of joke writing techniques. Um, you've got to be prepared to dig deep. Comedy isn't easy because you need to peel back layers and peel back layers and ask questions and almost step outside of yourself or the situation and look at it from a new perspective. So you've got to keep digging You've got to be patient and you've got to ask yourself lots of different questions. But that is the way to, to get the comedy gold nugget that is waiting for you at the end of that process. Every word you use must serve the purpose of the joke. In comedy, one of the holy grails is keeping the joke as clean and as tight as possible. They do say actually that the longer the setup, the better the joke's got to be, which is why we try and keep it short. Also, attention span of an audience is about one to four lines. So try and keep your, any joke that you write or in a presentation or whatever to between that sort of, that span, so one to four lines. Yes, well that's it. I hope this has been useful. I have a cu couple of things to say before I go. Um, first of all, there is a freebie and you can collect it at www.saraharcher.co.uk and not only has it got more detail on the techniques that I shared in this sesh but there is also three more techniques for you so go along and collect your freebie from www.saraharcher.co.uk thank you very much and remember people grab life by the nuts and get cracking bye bye